Welcome to my little Fernie experiment. Bloom and grow, YouTube show. Okay, plant friends, I'm gonna be real with you. I'm a pretty epic fern killer um, in my day. If you've taken the plant parent personality test that I have, I actually um, vacillate between a mindful plant parent, which is someone who wants to like check in on their plants every day, use them as a meditative practice. Uh, ferns are an awesome option for, for mindful plant parents. And then sometimes in different seasons of my life, I can be a little bit of a low-key plant parent, meaning um, I'm not as on top of my plant care routine as I need to be, especially in 2020 with all of our moves and everything we had going on. Um, I've really gone really dramatically in between mindful and low-key plant parent. That being said, I've never been able to keep a fern alive. I've had a few ferns in my life. One fern, a trusty fern I've had since the beginning of my plant parenthood, perished in 2020. You know, I would be nailing it and then kind of forget about it for a couple of months. It would kind of die back, cut it back, and then it would grow grow again. The one, the one cool thing about ferns that I realized is they are randomly hardy. If you cut them back, they do tend to grow back. But I was in my new nursery in our new town, Adam's Fair Acre Farm. Shout out to the Kingston location. And I saw this um, orb, uh, cloche. This is what these are called, a glass cloche. It was, it came with a different pot, but it made me think of maybe doing an experiment. I've been taking this class that Leslie Halleck is running at UCLA Extension, and she's encouraging us to try caring for different plants that we haven't cared for. And the maidenhair fern is a plant I have always been terrified of taking care of. But with a cloche, a cloche is basically a glass little hack to increase the humidity in a very closed surrounding. So basically, when you use a cloche on a pot, it amps up the humidity level for only this area. Um, so I had the thought as I was in the tropical nursery at Adams Ferryker and I saw this cloche and then they have all of these little terrarium plants in these adorable little, you know, two inch pots. They're all $3 a plant. Why don't I do a little experiment and push myself in my new home? Our humidity levels are th still 29 to 30%. So the plants will not thrive if I don't do something to the humidity, but we have carpet, so I'm still trying to figure out how to raise the general humidity of our home. What if I did a little experiment and I took these ferns that could not live in our home and I put them under glass and I see how they did. My office is in a, has two northern facing windows, which would be perfect for ferns that are low light loving. Um, it would be so fun to have a little terrarium at my office. Um, and I wanted to do a little experiment because why the heck not, right? So I've been kind of playing around. I actually, I got these plants like two weeks ago and the maidenhair fern is already showing signs of being really unhappy because it hasn't been planted up. Um, Cause I've been kind of playing around with how I want to do it. So my best friend gifted me this pot. Um, it, what does it say? Killed all my plants. And that's just our humor, but I thought it would be a funny, um, a funny pot to plant all these ferns up in because I am a fern killer. So oh, this one feels so nice. I'm pretty sure this is an asparagus fern. So we have asparagus fern, I think, uh, heart-shaped fern as a Valentine's Day is approaching as I plant this up, and then the elusive, sexy, yet famous for killing in homes made in hair fern. So here are my thoughts. I am gonna pot these three plants in a plastic nursery pot to hopefully maintain some of the moisture in the nursery pot because plastic is gonna keep the soil moist longer than a terracotta pot. I'm going to sit that nursery pot because the way this cloche works is it's thinner on the inside, so it kind of tapers. So the nursery pot I'm gonna plant up in is smaller than this white pot. I'm gonna put a layer of um, LECA and horticultural charcoal at the bottom. So, and then what I think I'm gonna do as an experiment is put a tiny layer of water at the bottom. Hopefully that will help encourage some humidity buildup in there. Sit the pot on top of the LECA so there's no chance of um, roots getting root rot sitting in water. The roots in the pot will be much higher over the LECA, but hopefully then we get the one-two punch of the glass just maintaining the humidity of the transpiration of the plants and the evaporation. Basically what I'm gonna do is make a pebble tray and I feel like there's people, a lot of people say that pebble trays aren't really successful with managing humidity because 
it just evaporates into the whole room. But if we make a little pebble tray in this terrarium and it only evaporates into the glass, I think that could be interesting. And there is a tiny hole on the top of the glass, which I feel good about because I do want some air exchange. Um, because sometimes when I've like tried to do houseplant hospitals where I've just like put a plastic bag over a plant, if you don't cut ventilation in there, the plant will just completely mold and die. So that's my plan. Um, I'm really curious to see if it works. I'm super excited. So before we get started, I'm going to water myself and take a drink and grab that nursery pot and let's like get this party started. So first I want to get the right amount of LECA at the bottom of the pot. So I'm gonna pop these three ferns in this pot, which is larger than this one that it came in. I'm sure it'll be plenty of space. I'm gonna fill the bottom of the pot with LECA and horticultural charcoal, a spoma. My main potting soil boo just came out with horticultural charcoal. Um, which you use a lot in terrariums. People use them for drainage. Sometimes people say to use it for drainage at the bottom of your nursery pot, but we know that I don't do that practice. So I'm gonna take that concept and apply it in here. Oh, my hands are gonna get real black. All right, so we've got a nice mixture of leka and charcoal. That will hopefully kind of just absorb the water at the bottom. Whoopsies retain it. I've had a couple of plant friends who have told me that they use LECA like this and that it works pretty well. Okay, so now I'm just gonna make sure that I get these measurements right. Cause I, you're gonna want Okay, I can tell this is gonna be really annoying when <laughs> this is right, but it's gonna be a real art to getting this cloche on. Okay, so we've got this little layer, our little pebble layer at the bottom, um, which I'm very curious to see if that works. Worst comes to worst is I'll just not do that, um, but why not? Why not do a fun experiment? So let's see what we're working with under these, under the hood of these pots plants as we take them out. Okay, we've got a nice root structure on this bigger fern. And then we've got these little babies. Look, they're so cute. You're so cute, you little heart-shaped fern. Oh, interesting. So they're kind of, um, they're grown in like little pods. And then the pods, oh, so they're, gr <laughs> they're grown in little pods. Um, like when you do, when you start seeds. Um, that have this like biodegradable film, but it's still there. So I'm actually just gonna take that out. Um, and then Mr. Maidenhair, Mrs. Maidenhair, what do you think? I should call her. Mmm, I love the smell of potting mix. I've been reading a lot about um, scent and the brain and there is a, in soil, I actually don't know if it's in potting mix, but there's a bacteria called M. Vacae and a smell called geosmin that get released in uh, when it rains in the earth. And that smell of that like delightful post rain smell that we smell is actually um, like bacteria that get activated by the water. Isn't that interesting? Um, so, you know what? Whoa, these roots are awesome. Um, they're nice and big, okay. So I am going to use general Espoma Organics potting mix for this. So my thought is I wanna have like three cute layers. So I wanna do like a cute, the, the asparagus fern is obviously gonna be the tallest and then have the maiden hair and the um, heart like that next to each other. And I think it's gonna be a super cute. Man, but the way these, these little plugs are quite interesting. Okay, so I'm gonna use Foam Organics Potting Mix, this is what I use on all my house plants. You've probably seen me amend it with perlite or orchid bark for other plants, but since these are more moisture loving plants, I'm not gonna amend it with anything. Um, I've used it unamended with a lot of other plants anyway. It's really nice and airy. You can see there's like chunks of bark, lots of perlite, all sorts of like sticks and stuff like that. Um, so we're gonna, is that enough? I think that's enough, let's start with that. I'm gonna pop this up. So we've got one plant in, then we've got another plant 
here. Actually, I'm gonna take this out. Since this pot is deeper than those roots, I'm gonna fill it first before I put those other two in here. Then we're gonna do a cutie patootie little heart over here, and then we're gonna put that maiden hair over here. These are really delicate, okay. Okay, now I'm gonna backfill and make sure this is potted up. The potting mix in the bag is super dry, so I'm also gonna give it a really good water. This is like my little Valentine's Day fern mix. My little Valentine's Day gift to myself. Okay, so now I'm going to water the plant um, over the um, LECA mixture because I figured whatever drops through can just like drop through to the LECA mixture. But this came out really cute. I love my little heart-shaped fern and I'm hoping that as they grow together, um, they're, they're just gonna grow into each other. I know that maidenhair ferns, like once they're happy, they grow like pretty epically. So I'm excited to see, I hope they like fill the inside of the orb. I think, I mean the, the dome, that'll be really fun. So I'm gonna give this guy a nice water. When potting soil is also like pretty dry coming out of the bag, it's nice to just be patient with watering because you really need to give the soil a minute to like absorb the water for the first time. And I always prefer a soil that's dry in the bag than a little moist because then I feel like, how many times have you like opened a bag and it's like moldy because it's like not shipped properly, right? Another reason why I love with spiller. All right. So now we've got some drippage coming out of the bottom of the pot. So I'm gonna do my best in here to like make the LECA as flat as possible. Easier said than done. Sit the LECA, sit this pot on the LECA. Here we go. Oh yeah, baby. And then Gonna try and get this whole asparagus bird in this cloche. Okay. Come on, guys. Oh, wow, that wasn't so bad. You know what I feel like this thing really needs is like a little gnome or something. Like it needs a little plastic terrarium, like little deer or something to go inside and like sit amidst the ferns. I'll have to like go on. I think I have a whole Amazon storefront from my terrarium episode that has like all sorts of like little fairies to put. So I'm gonna go on my own Amazon storefront and probably order something. So here we go, here it is. I think you can see my ring nut light reflecting in this, um, but it looks so cute. I'm so curious to see if this works. This is a total experiment based off of some stuff that I've been learning. Um, but yeah, that maidenhair fern was definitely like not super happy in my 30% humidity home. So I hope that after it sits in here and after some nice humidity grows in the dome um, that the ferns just start thriving. I'll keep you guys posted. I'm gonna sit this on my north facing desk in my office um, and we'll see how it goes and I will certainly report back but I love this little Valentine's Day present to myself with my little heart shaped fern and guys here's hoping third time's a charm right I think I've had two dead ferns I had a Boston fern and then another fern that was gifted to me so here's third time's a charm in trying to keep ferns alive with some hacks of a humidity cloche so until next time plant friends do, do, keep do, do, and keep do, 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 do. Doom 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 do